This is Deb Colling, and I want to visit with you about documenting articles that you find in databases. What you see before you on the screen is a typical article from Academic Search Premier, the EBSCO host database. Once you've opened up an article to look at its record, notice the tools over here on the right-hand side. In particular, I'm looking at the button that says Cite. When you click on the Cite button, you're given a citation format and you scroll through to find out the one that is MLA. Once you find the MLA one, all you have to do is cut and paste the information here and put it into your Word document. Once you paste the citation into your Word processor, you still have a little work to do it because Academic Search Premier does a pretty good job of formatting it, but it's not perfect, so you have to make some changes. First, make sure you have things that in italics that need to be in italics. The title of the novel, the name of the journal, and the name of the database should all be in italics. I have to use underlining here because this app I'm using on my iPad doesn't do italics, but you get the idea. Academic Search Premier also capitalizes everything indiscriminately, and I need to go in and make sure that a few things are put in lower case. Of between, the, and in should all be in lower case. In other words, use good MLA title capitalization rules and you'll find those in your Hacker and Somers book. I also, because the original title had a quote in it, I have a quote within a quote, so I have to change those double quotations to single quotation marks. As long as I have this citation here, I'm going to walk you through the essential elements so you understand what each part of it means, because everything has meaning in an MLA citation. We start with the author's name, reversed because it's going to be alphabetized by the last name. So last name followed by a comma, first name followed by a period, and the same period goes after the initial that stands for, that last, that serves for the end of this entry. Then I've got the title of the article in quotations from the beginning to the end of the title. The title has a period. Notice the period is before the quotation mark. Next I have all the relevant publication information. The name of the journal, the volume number, the issue number, the year, and the full pages that the article appears on. All of that is followed by a period. And notice the punctuation here of periods, parentheses, colon, do all that exactly as I've illustrated here. The name of the database that I got it from, the medium I used to find the article, in this case web as opposed to a print publication, and finally the date that I accessed the article online. Notice as well that the entire entry is double spaced and that I use hanging indentation. That means that the first line is out farther than the subsequent lines. That makes for easy alphabetization by the last name. For more information on this, see your Hacker and Somers book. Page 416 gives you a detailed analysis of how to analyze an article's title and journal name and publication information and to put it in the right order. Other databases take a little more work to create the citation. I'm in JASTER now, and I have an article before me, Reading Visual Narrative, Art Spiegelman's Mouse. Here, I'm going to click on the option to view citation to get all of the information about the article in one convenient place. Here's the information JASTER gives me, the information in this little pop-up box right here. And once again, what I do is I cut and paste this information into my document, but as you can see, it's going to take a little more work to put it in the proper order. Here's what the resulting citation should like, look like from a JASTER article. Once again, I have to add some italics. Narrative, the name of the journal should be underlined. JASTER, the name of the database should be underlined. Mouse, the name of the book should be underlined. Beyond that, I've got the same elements in the same order. 
I have my author's name reversed, followed by a period. I have the full title of the article in quotation marks. I have the name of the journal, volume number, issue number, year, page numbers, database, medium, and date I accessed it. Once you've created your citations, you're putting them together in a works cited page at the end of your paper. And here's a sample page which I've taken from the Hacker and Somers website. Your works cited page will not be as long as this, but it will look something like this. It always has this title of works cited, centered, and it's always plural, even if you just have one. You can have your header and your page number up here. All your entries are going to be alphabetized by last name. All of them are going to be double spaced. All of them are going to have hanging indentation. For more information on how to create your works cited page and wh what exactly it should look like in terms of the formatting, take a look in your Hacker and Somers handbook. Page 431 shows you, tells you how to document it and format it. And page 440 has got a sample page with all of the explanation. I hope this information helps you. Good luck with your citation work.